this is the bed where JV and Sarah were found. Uh, Sarah was on the inside, JB was on the outside. Again, with the mirrors covered, uh, the oil lamps. This is actually one of the axe marks left uh. on the side of the wall. According to the reports, at the edge of the steps, there was a big pool of blood where the killer had stood holding the axe and it dripped a, a rather large pool right here. Um, without being too graphic, each hit, you know, he's hitting them 20, 30 times each. He's going to pull back, that's going to spray blood across the ceiling. Eight people, I mean, this whole place would have just been covered. Uh, most likely the killer hid in the attic. And that is just right through this doorway. People have put things in here to stop ghosts, like the bell, and then there's a, a, a crystal downstairs. And there was a, a salt line earlier, but I took the liberty of sweeping that away. <laughs> yeah, oh, so we're not protected. Awesome. Yep, exactly. Just well, salt. Like I mean, we're. By the way, in case you are curious or you want to know what we are doing, we're at the Velisca Axe Murder House in Velisca, Iowa. And John, who moved here three years ago, um, actually was here. He was doing a, a, a sort of ghost hunt. Mm -hmm. He was doing a ghost hunt and was very interested in the house and ended up staying met a local woman and has a has a two-year-old daughter now and they live uh, close by yeah uh, this is where Herman Paul Boyd and Catherine were all found uh, the four more children this was definitely the bloodiest room the worst room to come to the axe marks were so many in the ceiling that I mean they couldn't tell what happened and this is the attic door that opens and closes quite often. The minister, this is where she got pushed and scratched. Why are there like children's toys and shit in here? Uh, people just bring all kinds of stuff and leave it. Why are they doing that? It's kind of one trigger objects. Maybe uh, that'll lure the ghosts of their children out. Two, kind of like respect. One thing though, like be careful, you know, trying to interact with the kids or whatever because whatever is in this house has a definite dark side. Mm -hmm. Darker demonic hauntings thrive on pretending to be something else. So just keep that in the back of your head, you know. What? What are you doing, Joe? <gasps> hey, my... Oh, look. I think I just caught that on camera, Tony. My, uh... My question is how can you kill eight people? Nobody Without knows. none of them realizing it, like with a big axe too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, kind of the same story behind the DeFeos, which was the real backstory with the Amityville house. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronald yeah, DeFeo killed six people with a 12 gauge, and nobody woke up. So how does that happen? You know. Right. I feel like there's a constant earthquake in this house. It makes it just so. Well, because we were there in the you know the wood mm -hmm. when we were there in the other in the. The um, mm -hmm. attic, it's it's there's not a lot of stability in that. Yeah. Like, it, no, but even oh, I just felt that right now. Yeah, it feels like a constant, like it's just when you move. Yeah. I know it feels like the whole house is moving. The windows creaking. You guys, we're, this is so weird. Yeah, it is. Are you guys doing like do you? I think it's because you're moving, because like the house is old. The house is creaking it's and shaking like over a little bit. It's over hundred years old. Right. So we're in, and I'm gonna, we're gonna continue on, but just like a couple things that are going on. We keep losing, we keep losing the ability to broadcast this out, and so hopefully that's gonna stop. But even weirder, and it's probably just because of the age of the house. Is this, is this broadcasting? Yeah, okay. It's probably just because of the age of the house, but Jessica was like, Hey, don't you feel like the house keeps moving? And I was like, no, I don't feel like that at all. You're being silly. And I'm thinking she's scared because of this. So I'm thinking she's scared because of that. But then now, like, you feel like the house just keeps moving. It's the weirdest, it is the weirdest thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, there's nothing, nothing super nice about this place. <laughs>
And now okay. you're going to be in here all now night. Now, a question for you. Mm -hmm. Then why do you live next door? Why would you stay here, especially with a daughter and a wife? Like, why would you, why would you be here? Well, um, you know, I had a lot of experiences when I was a kid. Uh, this particular house we lived in, I can remember nightly, uh, my family walking around dead with a loaded 12 gauge with the kids behind us thinking somebody broke in. Um, and that got me into the whole paranormal thing. And within the paranormal world, you have just ghost hunters that are out just for thrill going to places. And then demonology is a big thing. You know, I do a lot of private cases with private residents, this and that, that deal with possible demonic stuff. And I don't know, it's just something I fell into, I guess. Yeah, let's go downstairs. I want to get out of the upstairs. <laughs> you know, like just because I can't, I can't like actually work here. Okay. That sounds so stupid. It's like I, I actually can't work here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs>